Hello viewers, welcome to Fashion Fiesta. On our show today, I have a well-known face on the fashion circuit, Namrata G. She's the heart, soul and the mind behind Kairos and Man by Nam. Let's get to know her journey. Hello Namrata, welcome to our show. Thank you so much. So Namrata, uh, when did your journey start? Well, um, I would say my journey started when I was just seven years old. Okay. Because... Um, uh, a friend's aunt was like, um, I don't like the way you dress. And that got to me. And I went home and kicked a big scene with my father. And he's like, all right, so here's a tailor for you in one room every day. New outfit. I don't care what happens. You're going to dress new every day. Okay. So I think that that's when the roots of design got set in. And then, of course, I moved to Bangalore. And it's in, I think, 1994. I just started dabbling with design. 98 uh, is when I launched my first collection and we had had a big show at the um, Kingfisher Derby and then at the Oberoi and that's how I got started. Okay, uh, quite a long journey it's been. Uh, it's been apart a fun from, journey. Yes, yeah. and apart from uh, designing you've actually uh, spoken, you've been a speaker at institutes. Uh, do you want to talk about that? I think you know, I just love to be a speaker. I enjoy speaking. And more than anything, I enjoy the whole process of transformation. So when I speak, I like to make sure that everybody who is in the audience either steps out as a better human being or as a better dresser, one of the two. So I also believe that dressing, style and fashion is just not an outer journey. Because unless and until you are really complete within yourself or love yourself enough, it's very tough for you to look good on the exterior. So I do a lot of um, talks where fashion is concerned, but related to your inner sense, your inner beauty, and that brings out the external beauty. Mm -hmm. So I do get invited to a lot of forums, a lot of women's forums, a lot of institutes who need to guide their um, students into just not developing their personality externally, but to be better human beings inside and outside. Mm -hmm. It's more of what you uh, have inside that reflects on, on your personality only, outside. Only. Yes. So uh, that's why you've ventured into image consulting and you have an institute especially for that. Yeah, because I feel that uh, there's a lot of uh, talk going around about building your image. But, you know, you just can't build a... You don't have a foundation and you're plastering your building. Mm -hmm. You can't go too tall, True. right? You'll probably do a one floor. Mm -hmm. But unless and until you don't build an a foundation as to why does somebody need that image or what is in it for that person to have that image. It's only then that you can really consult someone. It's very easy for, I think there are dime a dozen image consultants. All they do is tell you wear this shirt, wear this trouser, wear this watch. But I think image consultation is a very, very deep subject mm -hmm. and it can't be dealt with as a, just a superficial, you know, one-off uh, basis. It has to be really studied well with the person. And also, you know, you just don't consult an image for today. You ask the person for his goals for the next five years, the next 10 years, mm -hmm. and prepare him or her to have that image that keeps changing in those years. So image is something you can change. Style stays constant. Mm -hmm. So you have to explain this to the wearer. And that's the reason I felt that there's such a huge demand for image consultants, but I don't want to be an image consultant. I make over your complete image. Mm -hmm. And then I guide you in life as to where you should go from there. Right. So it's actually a custom-made process, uh, yes. image consultation. Yes. And um, so any particular age group that uh, uh, they actually have to start off, uh, you know, consulting and thinking about uh, the image they want to project? It again varies at different levels. So it's like when you're getting into a job after you've done your MBA, you need a certain image. You've gone mid-level management, again, you need a certain image. You've reached top management, you need a certain image. You're an entrepreneur, you need a certain image. So the image is so relative to your, um, I think it's more about, not about the age as much as about the external being, right? So where are you currently? And based on that, what is it you want to portray to the world? So I always believe you should really portray a notch above. So if you really want to grow in an um, organization, it's better that you uh, think big, rather than pretend to be small and shrivel. So it's very relative. I wouldn't say age is a factor, 
the people who want to reinvent themselves when they're 70. So what's wrong with that? True. Right? Yes. I'm very curious about uh, your label, Kairos. What does it mean? It's a yes. Greek word. And um, I remember long back I had read a book called Handbook for the Soul. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in that, the word Kairos talked about um, when two people, it's like lovers in unison. It's an artist with his canvas. Time stops still, right? You're just so one with what you're doing that time doesn't matter. That is called Kairos. Mm -hmm. It's like that Shunya. It's that where the moment stops, right? So um, anyways, I went on with my life and I forgot about the book. Just when I was launching my store, I don't know from where that thought came okay. that it has to be Kairos. Right. So I went back hunting for the book and found that book, found the passage. So I called my studio Kairos because it means that being one with what you're doing. So uh, you've all, uh, actually launched a lookbook uh, for women, right? Fashion the women. Style Diary. We have a Style Diary where um, it talks about different facets of style, fashion, trend, and how you can create your own lookbook, right? Mm -hmm. So each of us has a style we'd like to look like. And we have wardrobes that are dumped with stuff which you're not able to use, which doesn't match your current style. True. So how do you really create a look for yourself year after year? Fill up that book. Be serious about it and then follow it. Mm -hmm. So but it's like so many times you're going on in magazines and you like a certain look. Tear the look, put it in your book. Right. So that when you really want to dress up or shop, or anything, you're in tandem with what you want to be. Just because you find something cheap at a sale, please don't pick it up. Mm -hmm. Because it's just going to lie there and you're going to throw it away or give it to somebody who doesn't want it. So I personally feel less is more. So have just 10 garments you want to use in a season or 5 garments depending on your style and wear the style. So every season look new, mm -hmm. renew, reinvent, keep thinking about your inner self and decide okay now what's the image I want to portray. Based on that it's important for you to really decide how you want to dress. Right. So your lookbook is personal to you and you decide this is going to be my 6 months ahead. So, uh, Namrita, we were talking about, uh, you know, revamping your wardrobe. Uh, but how to do it in a friendly way, uh, pocket-friendly way? <laughs> like I said, less is more. Yeah. That itself suits your pocket, right? Now, I always believe that all of us have a balance in life. Mm -hmm. So, we have fun. We have our night lounging. We have um, day wear. We have casual wear. We have party wear. And we have corporate wear, right? So you have to really create your own pie and decide where is it you want to spend more money because where is it you spend more time. Hmm. So there are people who spend a lot of time in their offices. So that's your focal point. There are some people who love to socialize. They're clubbing, they're partying. So is that 30% of your life? There are some people who just want to wear a ganji and go to sleep. That's their call. But I personally believe that you really have to dress well for yourself. Hmm. So you're not dressing for another so even if you're, you know, in your nightwear, let's make it the best nightwear you ever wore. Okay. So uh, you have to draw your own pie. Based on your pie, you decide, okay, this year I want to spend... We don't have a budget clothes, right? Mm -hmm. We just stupidly swipe our card or just buy what we like. But if while we're budgeting our life, we can budget, okay, I want to spend X amount on my clothes this season. You know, you'll spend wisely because, you know, you have only that much. So you won't buy any rubbish. You'll buy exactly what you want based on the image you create for yourself. Second thing, you should look at your wardrobe every six months. Mm -hmm. Whatever you have not worn for four months or five months, you're never going to wear it. Okay? <laughs> okay? So just take it out and give it to a friend or give it to a charity because in a good condition, somebody will use it. Mm -hmm. Once it's totally gone, you don't even feel like giving it to anyone. So take out what you're not going to wear. Give it away. All right? Fill up the blanks, then decide, okay, I've got four trousers, I've got four skirts, I've got four, four jackets. What do I want to fill in? I don't have shirts. I don't have dresses. I don't have evening wear. So fill your wardrobe with the budget of only what you need. And make everything look new. See, trousers is something which is, you don't have to keep changing them. But if you had to wear a long jacket, you had to wear a lovely cowl top, you could wear it with a short bust here and then a long jacket on it. So you can reinvent style with really not too much money, okay? But you just pick that one piece that can add to another garment. Mm -hmm. 
Plus, at the same time, you know your wardrobe's in your control and not in the cupboard's control. And no, 80% of your stuff is never worn in a wardrobe. Right. Because you're buying without thinking. Right. All right. And you're buying because you're carried away. So cut down all that and buy only what you need. So uh, do we have a few... Uh uh, those essential things which can make or break an outfit that we can concentrate on? Certainly. First things first, your shoes. Whatever happens, don't wear tacky shoes. Wear the best <laughs> shoes that you can. Okay. Second thing, your handbag. See, it's not just about the top and the trouser mm -hmm. or the jacket, but your accessories also that make a difference. Mm -hmm. Then what you wear in your neck, what you wear in your ears. Like today, I'm wearing only the earring. Right. I didn't wear anything on my neck. Right. I didn't want to overdo it. I like simple, simple, the look simple. So I also think that when you are dressing up, you have to be, when you look at the mirror, you have to smile. Simple. It's like when you go for a haircut and you get a good haircut, you smile wide. True. If it's messed up, you just drop, right? right? Likewise, once you start understanding your body, your image, your wardrobe, once you're in communication with yourself, the moment you dress up, you'll either smile or not smile. The day you don't smile, please don't go out. Wear something else till you smile. Mm -hmm. So when you look into the mirror, you should feel, I'm ready to take on the world. But the moment you feel, this color doesn't good, look good on me, I don't like the fit of this jacket, I don't like the pair of shoes I'm wearing, change. All right. Because throughout the day, you're going to be carrying that to the back of your mind, my shoes are not okay. And what you're going to do is, when you're sitting also, you'll be trying to hide your shoes, yeah, all right? Awesome. So your entire thought process is taken over by something that's not adding value to your day. So why bother? Just, just change, you know? It takes another five minutes, right. but go out feeling happy with what you're wearing. Yeah. Very, very important. That's some really fantastic advice for all of us. So um, what is uh, uh, a fashion for you personally? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fashion for me is something that makes me feel like smiling. Okay. I love to wear color. I love to experiment. And uh, I just feel that I should wear something that suits my body, suits my image. I don't want to ape anyone. Mm -hmm. Like I see today women wear such short dresses because short dresses are in. Do you have the perfect legs? Do you have the perfect body? All these things are very crucial to dressing up. So always dress elegant. My style is very Jackie Onassis. I just get, I liked the way she dressed. Based on that, I got excited and I created my own style. But uh, classic elegance mm -hmm. and uh, understated. These are the way I dress. Mm -hmm. So is it difficult to dress women or is it uh, tougher to dress up men? I think once people, um, men are very easy, okay? Oh, yeah. For men, it's like they should just get their act together. They want the fit to be right. And then they don't want to get hassled. They don't want to come five times for a fit or they don't want to come and meet you very often. Mm -hmm. Once they know what you should wear and how, how to dress, they're just happy ordering over the film. You've got your measurements, they say, okay, five trousers, five shirts, whatever, it's over. For women, what happens is there's a huge... No, I enjoy dressing okay. women because today women have become very experimental. Mm -hmm. So from where I started to where the woman is today, uh, she's really willing to um, try out something new. So if I illustrate a, a crazy gown or I illustrate a backless or I illustrate something bizarre, they're willing to try. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that in that pursuit, you have to do your couple of fits. True. You have to get the act ready. They have to feel comfortable with the yes they have said. So it takes a little time. But the fact remains that neither of them is difficult to dress. Okay. All right? So okay. I don't think... It's just that a woman is... I think it's more personal. Also that a woman has more interest in the, the look. Mm -hmm. She really wants to look a certain way. For men, it's okay. They're not so mad that, okay, I saw this. I have to look exactly like this. Mm -hmm. They're happy if the fit is right and they're looking good. They're confident. They move out. All right. So uh, tell us about Man by Nam. <laughs> yeah, so Man by Nam was launched in 2002. It's a men's label that we do. And uh, it was just that Nam G Namruta. And we said, okay, Man by Nam. Okay. It's like Man and Nam. Yeah. So it just sounded so good. We just sat and named it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do some great menswear. Mm -hmm. So we have clients who come to us, who swear by us. 
and uh, were happy to look after them. Right. So I'm sure in this long tenure that you've had in the fashion industry, you must have had some weird uh, or uh, you know funny instances or <laughs> many, requests many. Uh, off the top of your head, something for our viewers. Uh, we have had a lot of requests for theme parties. Mm. Like, you know, you'll have that Siddhi 60s, which is the whole thing. And then, then you'll have some weary, really weird stuff. Okay. I remember a, a mother came to me and said, you know, I have to dress my son as a scarecrow. I'm like, you don't need to come to a designer for that. Okay. You can just use your imagination. No, no, you make that outfit for the scarecrow. I'm like, really? So we took a sack and we painted it black mm. and we did that cut on the side and right. a rope, right? right? But uh, yeah, we've had many funny requests. Brides have funny requests. It's like okay, brides have funny requests. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like you know, can I go bizarre? Can I go like <laughs> in a color that nobody's ever worn? Can I go really cut away? Can I go very deep cleavage? And I'm like, I don't know, it's up to you. Okay. I don't come in the way, I don't judge. Mm. The one thing I don't ever do is I don't judge a request, I don't, um, I don't think anything is right or wrong. Mm. Where fashion's concerned, is just what you can carry. Like, I'll tell you a very stupid incident, you know. My younger brother loved to wear tight jeans. Mm -hmm. Very, very skinny jeans. And this was like, he was probably, I think, 12. And okay. he had just gotten excited about this whole pipe jeans and right, drain right. pipes and all that. And he would just wear them. So when he had to wear them, he had to lie down on the bed and pull, pull, pull <laughs> and wear them. All right. Okay. But when he had to remove them, he needed my assistance. So he would hold on to his underwear and I had to pull his jeans. Oops. <laughs> so I would tell him, I'm like, you know, what's the need for you to really wear these jeans? I mean, you can always wear something looser. So he goes, baby, where fashion is concerned, comfort is secondary. So that stayed in my head. Okay. So even now when I talk to women and I say, you know, you really want to be over fashionable, you have to throw comfort out of the window. Mm -hmm. You can either be easy and comfortable or you can be fashionable and uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Choice is yours. You can't really strike a balance between comfort? Uh, not really. When you want to go high fashion, you want to wear an 8-inch stiletto and you want to wear tight stuff and you want to go really crazy, your stomach's all the time pulled in, it's not easy. Yeah, you to look like a diva is not easy. So there is a certain discomfort. But then come on, yeah? Life is all about enjoying your experiences. So you feel like looking like a diva, by all means, go for it. Uh, uh, beautiful thoughts actually. So Namrata, we come with different body types. Each person has a type. Uh, is it different for women and men? And uh, how do we dress up according to the uh, body type? <laughs> it's very, very different for both men and women. Okay, most men have very big bellies. Mm -hmm. Most women have very big hips. Okay. So uh, that's because that's how your body has been shaped and uh, uh, you grow up and obviously if you don't look after yourself, then you allow a certain body type to go out of proportion. Mm -hmm. So how do you dress as a, a body type? Let's say you're an apple, you've got a right, nice rounded stomach. Now I've seen a lot of girls or guys, they'll be wearing shirts where the button is literally ripping apart, mm -hmm. stomach showing, or the girls are also wearing t-shirts that are looking ugly on their bell belly. So you have to know one trick in dressing a body type. Whether you're big in the hip, big in the thigh, big in the bust, big in the hip, abdomen. The one thing you have to do is take away attention from the floor. Right. So if you're big in the stomach, then you should wear something that's more looser. And maybe wear a nice broad neckline with a little embroidery. So when somebody looks at you, they're looking at the embroidery and not at your stomach. Right. If you're big on the hip, Please don't wear very, very tight trousers and short top. The whole thing, the focus is the hip, right? Mm -hmm. On the contrary, wear slightly looser pants and wear a long top. So nobody even knows how big you are on the hip. Again, dress up your neck very beautifully. So the trick of dressing up a floor is to take the attention away from the floor. If you remember this, then you don't really need an expert counsel. You just have to know... Okay, this according to me is not right in my body proportion and for me to change it, I have to take the attention of someone who's going to look at me somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Okay, like if you're really big on the bust, please don't wear too much embroidery here because then it's, the whole focal is going to be on the bust. Mm -hmm. So what you could do is probably wear a nice neckline but do a lot of embroidery at the bottom of your kurta mm -hmm. or at the mm -hmm. end of your shirt. So again, the attention goes towards that detail. So that's how you, when you, somebody's watching you, the first look is that beautiful embroidery. The first look is, 
that neckline. And that takes away from anything that you're trying to hide. So be intelligent and dress accordingly, even if it's for men. Like, you know, if you know you're really huge on the stomach, wear a loser shirt. You don't have to wear a tight-fitting shirt and look ugly. Mm -hmm. Wear lapels on your, on your sh uh, shoulder. Okay. Wear a detailed collar. Wear a cuff. So, again, your attention is focused on the top. Yeah. So, you have to take attention away from the floor. Accentuate another part which shows a detail that people like. That's ex as simple as it is. Yeah, simple uh, nitty gritties that you have to take care of and uh, simple tips for you there. Yes, very right. important. So, uh, what is uh, the upcoming trend now? Uh, it's Currently, we're doing a lot of drape. The whole season is about trying to dress like a diva, a Roman diva, I would say. Okay. So, you're doing drapes on your necklines, you're doing drapes on your waist, you're doing drapes at the back, okay. you're wearing toga pants, you're wearing harem pants. The look is very, very flowing, very open, and uh, I would say one off. So, I can't say there's just one trend of a one shoulder or... A, you just create what you can given the look. Okay. Colors are very, very nice. So you have jewel tones. You mm -hmm. have the, the new color that everyone's wearing is the Minerva green. Okay. Mm -hmm. Minerva green is the, the green that people wore to the opera. Okay. When they went to watch a show or they went to watch the, or the orchestra, they wore this beautiful regal green called mm -hmm. the Minerva green. So that's very in now. Okay. And then you have a lot of nudes, right? So like the nude color is something that I think is the most classy color, according to me. Yes. If you dress it up a little well, it looks elegant. So you have nudes, you have turquoise, you have a Prussian blue. You have neons as well. You have a lovely yellow. The canary yellow is very in. And you have the neon greens. So I think pistachio. Color palettes are always, uh, I think since the last four years, color has taken on a big... A uh, new role in everyone's wardrobe. Suddenly, black's taking a back back seat. True, true. You don't have to wear black anymore because there are so many options you have, right? So, uh, trend is all about the new color that you wear and wear it well. Again, for color, I'll give a tip to all the viewers: is that when you want to try a new color, just drape it on your shoulder. If your face becomes like a bulb, like it brightens up, wear the color. But when you wear the color, if your face becomes dark. Please don't touch it. It's not going to do anything to you. Okay. So it's a very simple way that when you wear the, when you just put on the color on your shoulder, your face has to either shine or darken two shades. You decide what works for you. Okay. Remember bulb. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, corporate fox. Yes. Yes. You're the founder for corporate. I'm the founder fox. along with a partner Shama Bhatia, mm -hmm. who's a very dear friend of mine. Okay. So corporate fox was started to actually create a. You know, it's a savvy uh, and smart product mm -hmm. where you really bring out the best in corporate people or even the students. So we work, we work a lot with institutes where students who are now going to get into the job profile. So like you're just doing your BCom or your MBA. You need that polishing. So Corporate Fox does that overall polishing okay. of teaching you how to become an individual who's responsible, okay. who has goals, who has dreams and yet knows how to fulfill them who knows how to communicate, who understands emotional intelligence. So it's like the icing on the cake. Mm. So you have a foundation, but to give that foundation strength is what Corporate Fox is yeah, all about. Yeah, it's something like power dressing for your everything. work. Yeah, right? it takes everything into it. It makes you the complete overall. Right. It's like a finishing school, but not a flouncy finishing school, but it's a finishing school that also brings out a lot of your inner strengths. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number two, what is a big no-no? for fashion this season, men and women? <laughs> if you ask me, I'd like to say black, okay. okay? Though I know people still end up in black. You know, also not too many. Though. Earlier there were those stompy shoes that everybody was wearing. I don't think that's a great idea. Even your suits for men, it's a big no-no is an ill-fitted suit. Mm -hmm. So these days you have broad lapels and narrow lapels. So focus on what you're wearing and if anything is not fitting well, whether it's for a woman or a man, just don't wear it. Because I think that's fashion's biggest boo-boo, okay? Mm -hmm. The other thing is a lot of the girls are wearing torn jeans, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when you're wearing torn jeans and you've got bulging thighs, I mean, do you really think it's going to look good? It looks so ugly, all right? But then because you're a diehard, you just want to be in fashion, you go out of your way and wear those jeans, 
I'm like, it cries foul, right? So there are many things that I believe in a wardrobe that should be based on your image. Mm -hmm. So the first no-no is that please don't wear something that does not suit your image, right. okay? That's my biggest no-no. Yeah. So I don't want to pick a shoe or a bag or something. Second thing, if you are trying to ape someone, please ape it to the T. You oh. want to ape a hairstyle and then you wear something else as your outfit, you wear some other shoes, then you've already done a fashion faux pas, right? Mm -hmm. So you really want to look a certain way, the entire visual has to be complete. Right. So you wear this gorgeous dress and then you wear a tacky pair of chapels or something, you've lost the plot. Yep. So create the plot, create your image, go the whole hog. Mm -hmm. Don't desperately wear shorts, okay? Shorts are so in now. But have you seen ugly legs wearing shorts? You know, I'm just, I'm like, don't do it, please. Go work out first. Create a pair of legs that can look good in shorts and then wear them. So look that the fashion piece has to look like you are looking great as a fashionista and not someone who's just trying to wear a style or a trend. Right. Yeah. True. So you have actually won a lot of uh, awards for your right. service, let's say, to the fashion industry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, could you talk about those? <laughs> well, we have won the Bayou Fashion Awards uh, twice in a row, the Kingfisher Fashion Awards South India, Rajiv Gandhi Award for Fashion and Style. The Sindhi Chambers of Commerce gave me the Leadership Award for Women because according to them, uh, I thought they thought I had broken a lot of paths in fashion as well as as a human being to have crossed certain barriers coming from the community and then excelling, right? Okay. Like every community has a certain way they look at women. But of course, today times are changing. People are looking at, it, at them differently. But at the time I started, it was quite a challenge because the support structure you get is really minimal. Right. But at the same time, if you can surge ahead with those obstacles, the society bends. So when my community awarded me, I thought that was the biggest award I received because for them to receive you in totality mm -hmm. and to say, okay, here's a woman we are proud of. On the contrary, I'm now heading the uh, Sindhi Chambers uh, Women's Division. I see. Yeah, I'm the chair. Mm -hmm. Then I also was the chair uh, two years back for the Fiki Flow mm -hmm. when we launched it in Bangalore. Okay. So I took it over to a membership of about 32 women and we grew it to 75. Okay. So I have enjoyed my accolades and I've done a lot also to receive them in terms of I love giving back to society. What a noble thought. So you're very strive for women as well. Uh, um, is there something coming up for them in the near future? Well, let me tell you about my journey. It isn't as easy as it sounds or the way I talk, okay? It's been a struggle. So what happened is every time I had a challenge, rather than depending on a human being or going to someone for assistance, I resorted to books. I resorted to making myself better. So I've studied so much in the development of inner self and outer self that I now feel that a lot of women or even men, to say it in the right way, are really ready to talk to, you know, to be able to take on certain... Uh, tips and pointers that I could give them. So my whole goal is to really have this global platform where a certain woman even sitting in Timbuktu needs support in the middle of the night. It's her dark night. She can get onto a video I've recorded and maybe be able to smile and then get on in the morning and go and make her life. Right. That's the goal I have. Okay. Okay. What a lovely thought. Uh, we wish you luck in that. Uh, oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, I must ask you, Namrata, a lot of people would be traveling now for the season, for the festive season. Right. How do we travel smart and how do we travel uh, fashionably? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 15 kgs that they give you. You can hardly put anything. I put four <laughs> shoes and it's 15 kgs. Well, so, uh, the intelligent thing to do is... Um, carry separates, right? So you've got to try and be like, see, when you're going for a wedding as well, you don't have to overdo it. Because generally, how do we pack? If I don't look good in this, I must have two alternatives ready. Please try out everything here, create your entire visual and go absolutely prepared to dress like that. Right. Don't carry backups to say, okay, if this doesn't look good, I have something else. Be confident what you want to wear. Okay. By going there and seeing what others are wearing and then changing your mind just shows that you just don't have it in you, right? So for you to have it in you, be prepared, act sensibly. Don't overdo it. Now, if you know you've got a long travel and these days we're wearing can-cans and velvets, yes. 
then you have to know that you have got an excess baggage, right? Like I said, when you want to be fashionable, you have to be uncomfortable, <laughs> whether it's the body or the wallet. <laughs> Come so, straight from the designer <laughs> herself. <laughs> so you just have to uh, plan your wardrobe. And I think when you plan, you can really cut out some extra frills. I'm not going to tell you, please um, cut down on this or cut down on that. Look your best. And I think you should wear fashion at its you know, at its full bloom. So if something that you've been dying to wear and it's in the trend, by all means experiment. Just make sure the visual is right. You know, please don't just wear it because everyone else is wearing it. Okay. Okay. And uh, what are the three things that a woman should always have in her purse or in her wardrobe, whatever? Now the purse and the wardrobe are two different <laughs> things. The capacity is different. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say a purse, okay? Right. You must have your lip color. Mm -hmm. Because you can't let your lips dry and look ugly. Yes. You must have a little foundation that you quickly just... Uh, not a foundation, like a compact. So you, uh -huh. will, you can look fresh all the time. Mm -hmm. You can have a water spray to spray your face so that, again, your skin is always okay. quenched, yeah. all right? And your credit card in case you forget anything <laughs> else, right? That is that the most is important the key. thing. <laughs> yeah, so nothing can replace that. So even if you forget those three things, swipe. All right, okay. So, and for men, uh, what are the grooming tips for them? <laughs> if you can put it in two or oh, three Oh, yes, I can. First things first, please look after yourself. Men love to let go, okay? So they're just not bothered. They'll right. not work out, <laughs> get lazy. No, I think it's very, very crucial for a well-groomed man. A well-groomed man is, of course, these days everyone's wearing beards. So please maintain your beard. All right, just don't let it grow out of place and have a trend. Also your nails, your feet, get your manicures, pedicures. And of course, wear your colognes. Wear right, your, right, um, the basic you know, things. Yeah, and if you're sweating, please take care of that. Crisp and clean is the trick. Mm -hmm. Whatever you wear, make sure it's crisp, make sure it's ironed and it's clean. Simple. Okay, keep it simple, keep it neat, and smell nice. Absolutely. Men out there, yeah. Yeah, smelling nice yeah. is a nice. I love, yeah. I love smelling nice. Yeah. So, um, what do you think is uh, one overrated fashion trend uh, which must really go off? The turn the bags. <laughs> You've had enough of it? <laughs> Not enough of it. I just feel that, uh, I don't know, I, wouldn't, I can't adapt to it, you know, and I just feel there's no need to wear it. All right. But then there are people who are dying to wear it, so fine, fair enough, but um, I'm sure we can do better with new ideas and okay. stuff like that. Okay. That's overrated is this women's kurti. Oh, I'm like, you know, get creative. We're done with it, actually. Totally get done creative, with it. Get yeah. creative. And those tight, those leggings. Yes. Okay, okay. I think one can really create better. Well, I can actually relate to that, yeah. No? Uh, yes, I can. I mean, wear a pair of pants, girls. Stop wearing those dirty slacks and walking yeah. out in the middle. They'll just wear some shirt and tights. And I'm like, how creative is that, you know? Okay. Okay. So I think creativity has lost its mm -hmm. with a lot of people, okay? They just want to dress because they've seen someone wear it and they just put on something and walk out. And that's not your signature. It's not your style, so I really want each of each one each one to really love themselves to take that extra step to look better, okay. and that is really where you get a winning entry. Okay, okay. Uh, which fabric has not gotten its due? Let's say uh, handloom. Is, yeah. Okay. Handloom. I'm an advocate for handloom, and I think that as designers we tend to go the easy path. Now, to really play with khadi, to play with handloom, you have to be highly creative and create something that our weavers can go back feeling happy about. So we've taken on this uh, path of really bringing Banarsi stuff. Uh, you know, you've got bandage, you've got uh, kalamkari. There's so much available in our country. As designers, if we can give it a global platform, then I think we've done justice to our work. Mm -hmm. It's damn easy to use a Chinese crepe or a... Uh, you know, a fabric that excites you, which is probably from Italy or Milan. And come on, yeah, we are rich in our heritage. So I feel that we really need to focus on what is available in our country and take it to the world. Right, okay. So if uh, you can relate to some fabric, mm -hmm. let's say, uh, how would you describe yourself? Which fabric would you relate to? The Banarsi weave. I love it. 
I can visualize wearing a Banarsi lehenga, Banarsi sari. I mean, I can just think of oh, what, anything. What part of you is uh, that which, uh, you know, feels one with that? Uh, My soul. Okay. I just love it. Right. I just feel that it brings out the heritage. It's a royal fabric. It's really royal. And if we can wear it, um, you don't have to overdo it with embroidery. It's just so beautiful in its own way. So the way you drape it, the way you cut it, makes a big difference. All right. Are you fond of sarees? Not too, but I don't mind wearing them once All in right. a while. Yeah. Right. So Namrita, I cannot let you go without a piece of advice for newcomers who want to venture into fashion industry as designers. Designers? Yes. Um, first things first, find your style. Find out what is the signature you want to leave behind in the world and follow that. That's all. You don't have to do what everyone else is doing. You can just find your own niche and focus on that niche and grow in that niche. So if there's certain thing that is your signature, if you want to do just that, then do it and innovate in that signature year after year after year. Second thing, I think being a fashion designer, like everybody thinks, is a damn glamorous job. But, you know, it's not. Mm -hmm. I think it is the most stressful job because you've got to deliver on time. You've got to work with people who are labor. You've got to work with hand workers who test you every day. So whether you can really overcome that and uh, challenge yourself to perform is something that designers have to really embark on before they get on to their journey. So first, become a people's person, deal with clients, deal. It's you're dealing with a lot of people. It's not like you've done one fashion show and that's your life. Yeah. No, it's not. It's a lot more than that. Second thing, you have to always think about something we all didn't have at that time. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have easy access to global platforms. Today, every designer does. So, you know, think global, but use local. Mm -hmm. That's the tip I would give. Right. But are they spoiled for choice? Uh, there, there's so much of new uh, fabric or uh, let's say materials coming out into the market. No, uh, they're not. They have a lot not. of choice. Mm. So I'm just saying focus on that. Whatever you feel strongly for, just stay with it yes. and focus. And go in that direction. Right. Right. Make your signature. Right. So it was wonderful talking to you, Namrata. Really a pleasure to have you on our show. Uh, uh, I wish you all luck with your new ventures uh, and you. upcoming plans. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed talking to you as well. Thank you for Thank that. Thank you, cameraman, as well. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have a few words for the viewers of YTV? Uh, yes, I think YTV is a great platform for us to reach all of you and for you to interact with us. So I think the CEO and the team is doing a fantastic job. And I just wish them success and may, may they grow into deeps and bounds. Thank, thank you thank very you. much. That was very generous. Uh, thank you for watching our show, Fashion Fiesta. This is Arfa Siddiqui signing off. You take care. Bye-bye.